Well, good morning, everybody out there in YouTube land. It's absolutely a gorgeous day the good Lord gave us today. I am down here in Warsaw, North Carolina. Probably ought to close these windows. I'm at the shipper, here ready to pick up a load. Of course, uh, my appointment time to pick up the load is 10 o'clock. Of course, I was here a little bit prior to 9 o'clock. I am in the staging area. Also, what I refer to as the uh, suspended area of being ignored. <laughs> anyway I'm waiting for him to assign me a door so we may be sitting here for a minute no big deal this is part of hauling reefer thought I'd talk a little bit about hauling a reefer I actually uh, prefer hauling a reefer because it's kind of the lazy man's way of trucking I mean, the most exercise I get is when I stop is opening and closing the doors. Now, one thing when you're hauling a reefer, you do need to clean it out between loads. Now, when I say clean out, there's two different ways we clean it out. If there's any juices or wet material that have fallen on the floor, then you get a washout. So you go through the blue beacon and they wash it out for you charge it to the company no big deal it's about thirty dollars for a trailer washout but most of the time you just got a little uh, wood chip off of the pallets or maybe a little rubber dust off of the forklifts that get in your trailer and um, so you're supposed to sweep out your trailer between loads at least now, I don't actually sweep out my trailer. What I've got is a DeWalt battery operated, rechargeable, 20 volt lithium DeWalt air broom. Kind of like a leaf blower. So I just open up the doors and walk through my trailer and blow it out. Don't even have to sweep it with a broom. <laughs> makes life pretty easy now one thing though about haul and reefer is you're going to spend a little more time than a lot of other guys sitting and waiting I'll probably spend an hour waiting here for a door probably about two hours for them to get me loaded so I may spend here about three hours one thing, if you work for a company that you're hauling a reefer, you want to make sure that you get detention pay. It's one of those questions you want to ask before you go to work for the company. And then you also want to talk to the other drivers and ask them how hard it is to get approved for that detention pay. The company I've worked for, I have never been denied not one dime of detention pay that I asked for. Now, one of the things that they ask is as soon as I uh, have been detained, and as soon as I get ready to start rolling on the road, if I'll send them an email for the requesting of how much detention time that I'm wanting to charge them. The first two hours we give the company for free. So if my appointment time's here at 10, even though I got here at nine, my load time doesn't start till my appointment time, 10 o'clock. So if I'm here one minute after 12, I start charging them detention. It's not as much as I make when I'm driving, but at least it's a decent hourly rate for me to just sit here and do nothing. And most of the time when we're sitting here in the dock, we're generally in the sleeper, watching TV, make you something to eat, kind of like break time and if your truck is your home it's like laying around in your living room waiting to go to work so to me it's no big deal I actually enjoy hauling reefer I get to haul a little bit of everything 
Sometimes it's coffee. Sometimes it's french fries for McDonald's or Wendy's or hamburger patties or frozen chicken or frozen hamburger patties or frozen corn out of uh, Minnesota. We haul just about everything. Now one thing nice though about hauling reefer is there's not much downtime. People got to eat. And frozen foods are constantly going to the distributors for the grocery stores. So we are constantly hauling freight. We never have a slowdown. Or a lot of people will have a slowdown in the holidays or right after the New Year's, you know, till about March. We don't. We haul just as many miles through the holidays as we do every rest of the year. So that's one of the things I like about hauling reefer. Yeah, we may sit in the door once in a while. And every once in a while you get that nightmare shipper that holds you in the door for six, eight hours. At least you're getting hourly pay for it. Um, give you an example. There was a shipper here a little over a week ago held me in the door forever. Now, I understand I'm still going to get my mileage paid. It's going to be the same. So I'm not going to lose anything that week. But just my detention pay in that one day sitting in that door was $150. So you can either look at it as you were detained and forced to sit there. Or you can look at it as a $150 bonus for the day. And when I'm sitting there in the door, my clock's not running. The way I do that is I actually get within 10 miles of my shipper the night before, before I go on my 10 hour break. So then I get loaded and everything off the clock and then I don't actually start my clock until I'm loaded and I'm ready to start moving. That way I have my full clock available to haul my load. So that's the way I got it. I got a $150 bonus and Got all my miles for that day, too. Makes for a long day. A little short on the sleep. But it's all good. I get plenty of sleep every day, so if I have to run a little long one day here or there, it ain't no big deal. The other thing about hauling reefer is you have to babysit that reefer. You've got a load in the trailer that's worth a quarter million dollars or more of frozen food. And you got to babysit that temperature. Some loads are pretty particular about the temperature that you haul them in. For instance, ice cream or strawberries. Strawberries is one of the most delicate loads that you'll ever carry. The temperature has to be just right. You can't uh, really fluctuate more than about four degrees on a strawberry load. But most of the time, I haul frozen. And when I haul frozen, I haul it at negative 10. Now when you're dispatched to load, and uh, the dispatcher tells you frozen, pre-cool your trailer to negative 10, I'm going to tell you something. These shippers, the warehouse man, he's going to come out and he's going to check the temperature on your reefer check the set point on it and everything before he starts loading. When you open your doors and you pull into the dock, they're going to check the ambient temperature inside your trailer before they start loading you. You have to be within a certain tolerance before they'll load the product in the trailer. So Pre-cool your trailer before you get there. Where that causes a problem though is when the dispatcher tells you you're on a frozen load at negative 10, so you pre core your trailer at negative 10, open your doors back into the dock, they load your trailer, and you go in and get your paperwork. When the green light comes on, the guy generally from the shipper warehouse comes out, checks your trailer temperature, and tells you you're all good to go. I'll tell you a mistake I made early on where I learned a lesson. The guy comes out of the warehouse, comes to the side of my truck. I see him back there checking my reefer. I just open the door and say, are we good? And he goes, yep, you're good. 
So he checked my temperature, so I didn't. And I went in, got my paperwork, put it on my clipboard, and boogied on down the road. And I don't know why, but I just had this aching feeling, so the next morning, I thought I'd check my paperwork. Now, I had to set my trailer temperature according to what I was dispatched at negative 10. Well, the next day, after I'd been hauling this freight for about 24 hours, I checked the temperature on my paperwork, and it said fresh load, maintain temperature from 32 to 36 degrees. Holy crap. If this was a produce load, if it was vegetables, I'd have been in trouble. I was lucky. It was actually liquid egg. You know, cartons of egg whites and egg yolks and that type of stuff. So it didn't actually hurt the load that it was frozen. And the other thing was that it was a long trip as a three day haul. So I reset the temperature on my reefer back up to 34 degrees. And by the time I got to the receiver, and opened my doors and backed in. When they checked the temperature of the product, it was at 36 degrees, so whew, I got lucky. If I hadn't have pulled my paperwork and checked that temperature the next day for some weird reason, because I generally, once I get my paperwork put it on my clipboard, I generally don't look at it again until I uh, get ready to hand it to the receiver. So that's one thing I learned. Never trust anybody to check the temperature on your reefer. Another thing is watch that fuel on that reefer. A reefer completely full of 78 gallons of diesel will run a reefer trailer for about four days. Now that varies. Depends on how hot the temperature is outside or how cold because a reefer does two things not only does it cool it but it'll also warm it up for instance there's times when you're carrying a fresh load between 32 and 36 degrees when outside it's 16 degrees or it's even below zero outside at that time your reefer is acting as a heater instead of an air conditioner a refrigerant unit but you babysit that reefer Another thing is when you're doing a drop and hook with a reefer, uh, when you bring in and you're going to drop a trailer, a lot of times they're going to check to make sure that the trailer is clean. The other thing that they're going to want to verify is that you have more than three quarters of a tank of fuel in that reefer. So before you show up to a shipper, even though it may be a live load, stand by, be ready for a drop and hook. Make sure you fill your reefer unit full of diesel before you get to the shipper. These are the little ins and outs of pulling a reefer. Up, oh, I've got a call, which means that I've got to go pick up my load. Catch y'all later. Y'all have a blessed day. God bless each and every one of you.